There is only one thing more entertaining than reading a book to yourself. And that thing is reading a book to kids. But it has to be the right book. So as a public service and a holiday shopping guide, I am now going to recommend seven children's books that you will love reading out loud to children, regardless of whether or not those children are yours, or even whether those children are paying attention to you. If you are reading to a young child, you will have a great time with just about anything by Sandra Boynton. Among my favorites are Moo Ba La La La, the going to bed book, and Snuggle Puppy. But if I had to pick just one, it would be her classic, but not the hippopotamus which tells the story of a hippopotamus who is reluctant to play with the hog and the frog and the moose and the goose and the bear and the hare. And I defy you to read the final lines of this book, but yes, the hippopotamus, without feeling great enjoyment and satisfaction. Next is a book that my mom has read to me and my sister and all of her grandchildren, Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, very Bad Day by Judith Bjorst, a story that provides solace and comfort to anyone in a bad mood after a rough day. Alexander is old enough to know that he's having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, but he's too young to do much about it, except consider moving to Australia. If you know any kids who are learning how to use the potty, you will love reading The Saddest Toilet in the World by Sam Apple and Sam Ricks, which I'm pretty sure is the only picture book about a boy and his toilet that reads like a romantic comedy. I don't think I'm giving too much away by describing this book as boy meets toilet, boy loses toilet, boy gets toilet back. If you're looking for a picture book with a bit of suspense and a surprise twist, Creepy Carrots by Aaron Reynolds and Peter Brown has become one of our most beloved books and a regular bestseller around Halloween when kids are particularly in the mood for something orange and a little spooky. It's the story of Jasper, a rabbit who loves carrots way too much. He keeps taking the carrots from Krakenhopper Field until the carrots begin following him wherever he goes. Creepy Carrots won a Caldecott honor and is the first in a series featuring Jasper Rabbit, including Creepy Pair of Underwear and the forthcoming book, Creepy Crayon. If you're looking for a classic folktale that's still relevant, here's another Caldecott winner, Strega Nona. It's the story of an old lady, a witch, who can cure headaches and make love potions. But even an aging witch needs some help around the house, so she hires Big Anthony, who discovers that Streganona has a magical pot that can make an endless amount of pasta. When Streganona is away, Big Anthony decides to show off and make pasta for the entire village but he can't get the magical pot to stop cooking the pasta, and soon the entire village is covered in noodles until Streganona saves the day. This book makes me hungry for Italian food every time I read it. And finally, two very entertaining books for older kids, if they will still let you read to them. Belly Up is the first book in a series by Stuart Gibbs about a boy growing up at the largest zoo in America, a theme park called Fun Jungle. The boy, Teddy Fitzroy, finds himself at the center of a mystery involving the suspicious death of Henry the Hippo, the most popular attraction at Fun Jungle, who is discovered, as the title suggests, belly up. Teddy quickly discovers that Henry the Hippo had a lot of enemies. He was dangerous, irritable, and foul. So Teddy mounts an investigation to discover who done it, who killed Henry the Hippo. Dork Diaries is the number one best-selling series by Rachel Renee Russell. I had such a great time reading this book out loud because I got to inhabit the world of a tween girl who has a great sense of humor and spirit and personality. Dork Diaries will remind you instantly of your middle school years, and you will relive all of the insecurity and humiliation and joy and discovery that accompanies that period of life. Even if your kids aren't in middle school yet, it's a wonderful way to prepare them for what's coming soon. And that is the word according to CARP. I just keep thinking of that hip. <laughs>